All right, thanks, Ashley. So hi, everyone. I'm Denise Rizlo. I'll be your moderator today. So thank you for joining us for the Assessment Center Coffee Chat. Um, we know your time is valuable, so we're happy you decided to come hear about um, our new Assessment Center. So this is our second, um, excuse me, our third webinar, and we're really going to focus on the exam delivery platform, um, and we have one more coming up. For those who are unable to join us, uh, we will be recording the webinar. Uh, it will be up on our Assessment Center website. We also will have instructional videos, which are smaller clips that you can look at um, as you navigate our, our new system. There's a Q&A um, on the bottom that you can use, and that's where we'll answer any questions. We'll try to answer as we go because we've been getting a lot of questions. And if we don't get to things, we'll answer at the end. And if we still don't get to things, we will make a Q&A and we'll get it out in the network or so you can have your answers. So today we're gonna cover the pre-exam experience mainly for the faculty. We're gonna look at the proctor experience and we're also gonna look at the student experience. And we have a, a link here that we'll, we're gonna put into the chat. Um, thank you, Olivia. So it's a glossary of terms that may be helpful as you're listening to this session or when you move into using um, the new platform, it'll help you navigate uh, things a little bit better because they're new terms that will be new to you and you haven't heard before. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it to Emily. Great. Thank you so much, Denise. And hi, everyone. I'm Emily Yunker. I'm the Director of Assessment Services. I'm joined today for the demo by my colleague, Chiquita Carey. To start our session on the exam delivery platform, uh, I'd like to direct your attention to our website, paeaonline.org where you will locate the PAEA member community icon to begin your journey. Our new system allows you to use our one PAEA login for accessing the PAEA Assessment Center, along with other important member services. Since this is a test environment, we'll show you how to get there. However, we already have the member community homepage prepared for you for today's demo. A note before we dive in, the test taking experience is probably the most different from what you're used to in exam driver as we improve the security of the system. When you set up assessment related roles, you can assign proctor users who will have access to the exam delivery platform and can assist with all exam events in the system. And so once these users are logged in, go to the assessment center dropdown and click exam delivery platform. Your first stop will be the proctor agreement. You will need to read and review this agreement when you log into the exam delivery platform every five hours as it outlines the responsibilities of a proctor. Once you reach the bottom of the agreement, you click agree and submit. Then it moves you right into the uh, exam delivery platform homepage. This page has key information needed for exam administrations, such as exam support, as well as news from PAEA assessment. For exam support, the contact information is available right here on the screen, as well as a link that will allow you to access the chat. The tools required for proctoring are set up in the test administration tab at the top of the screen. Let's walk you through the information available here. This large table is the list of all exams scheduled at your program with one student per row. Starting on the left of this table, first we have the state, which is the status of each exam row. Then the PIN. This is a code that can be used to initiate the exam for the student. All exams scheduled at the same time, so the same exam and accommodations link will have the same PIN. Next is the test name, which includes the exam name and the delivery type. Then is the key code, which is the student's identity verification code, followed by the center name, which is the system's name for a program. Then we have the subject, which is the exam type. Then we have the start date, end date of the test range, as well as the start time of the test and end time followed by the candidate or student's name. At the bottom are buttons to take actions as a proctor. I'll give you an intro now, and then we'll show you what each of some of these buttons do as we go through the demo. The first is to upload responses if you were to administer a paper exam. 
Then uh, we have the set pin and remove pin functions, which we'll walk through in a bit. Then the modify duration button. Uh, this button allows you to add extra time, but we incur we urge you to that to ensure the validity of the test results across students to please avoid using this button. Then we have the unlock button for starting exams and then your proctor controls pause resume and void. Then we have the print invigilation pack button, which we'll walk through shortly. So let's start with a few notes on how the new system is different from exam driver. As I mentioned, you will no longer assign proctors or set breaks at the time of scheduling. All proctor users have the access to the exam delivery platform and all exams that your program schedules. All exams will have 10 minute breaks between sections that students can skip as they wish, including PACRAT, which will transition to a th three 75 question sections to break up this long exam and make it consistent with other PAEA assessment exams. Student access on test day will require two things, a key code and an authorization to begin from the proctor, which will vary by delivery type. The key code is required for all exams. It is emailed to students when the exam is scheduled and is unique to the student and their particular exam. For unproctored exams, scheduling the exam with that modality is all you need to do to authorize them to begin. For remote proctored exams, student will, students will need a PIN given to them by the remote proctor. We will also walk you through this process in the exam day section. For in-person exams, it will be easiest to remove the pin and have the proctor begin the exam. We will show you how to use that in the next section. So now let's talk about the uh, pre-exam steps for proctor users and faculty. There are a few things you need to do before an exam session to get everything ready for students. The first is to send exam day instructions to students via email such as install and update the secure client, make sure they have their key codes and that they know where to go for the exam. We will be sharing templates that you can adapt and use in the coming weeks. If you're proctoring in person, you may want to print the invigilation pack to have a backup plan for students who forget their key code. Invigilation is another word for proctor. To use this pack, select the relevant students from the list, and click print invigilation pack at the bottom. Then select the desired format and click finish. This will generate a PDF document with slips that you can, can distribute to students as they enter the test. The first is an attendance register if you just need another method to check off and make sure everyone is present. Then an invigilation report that will help you uh, keep track of any suspected inappropriate behavior for investigations or anything that happens during the test. And then finally, you have the student's slips, which includes their exam details and their key code at the bottom. Now, if we go back to the test administration tab, for remote proctored exams, you will need to visit this screen to collect information needed by the remote proctoring service so that they can start the exam. You will no longer provide system login information to these services. Instead, you will need to provide them each student's PIN who will be sitting for an exam with them. The PIN is how the remote proctoring service will help the student initiate the exam. You will add these to the instructions when you set up the exam event. Then the proctor will provide it to the student after all identity checks have been conducted and they are ready to take the exam. Do not provide this to the student as they will be able to start their exam regardless of whether they're logged in with their remote proctoring service. There may also be some setup instructions for students to do depending on your program's relationship with your third-party remote proctoring service, like selecting their specific time slot. We'll provide templates based on the most common model for these relationships, which you can adapt to your program's purposes. Now let's walk through the what a proctor needs to do on exam day for an in-person proctored exam. First, as the students enter the room, 
select the students from the list as they arrive for the exam. This is the equivalent of marking them as present. Next, remove the pin using the button at the bottom. This is a helpful step if you have students taking a variety of exams, like all seven end of rotation exams with all three uh, different time-based accommodations. Those students would all have a different pin and it would just ease the process to remove the pin instead. Then the student completes their, um, their pre-exam steps, which we'll show you in the next section of this demo. And I am actually doing that over on my screen right now. Um, after the students complete their steps, you may need to refresh the screen. Then you will see this lock icon in the state column of this exam. Um, sorry. Um, then you can unlock the student's exam using the button at the bottom. We will show you the student's side of this in the next part of this session. Unlocking is like authorizing the student to begin. All the students will stay selected uh, throughout these steps so that you can do it all at once. You can also unlock the students as they are ready. Now I've got the test screen, the test questions on my screen, um, and you can also see that you now have the proctor controls at the bottom of the screen, such as pause and void. Pause allows you to uh, implement an unscheduled break, and void is the same as stop in exam driver where they stop the exam where they're at and it invalidate, invalidates any questions that they've seen already. Uh, there are no alerts in this system. The students take the test in a lockdown browser so they cannot take screen captures or view other screens. You can use the pins if you want, providing the students code on a slip of paper as they are ready to begin. And that concludes the proctoring section. So let's uh, switch presenters and walk through the student's experience. So I'm going to share my screen. And hand it to Chiquita. Thank you, Emily. In-person and unproctored exams will require the use of the designated lockdown browser, Secure Client. The link for that installation will be included in their confirmation email. It automatically updates each time you start. We are not using Secure Client today because we need to be able to show you the screens, but we will send out more information on this soon. The first step after they start up the relevant browser is to enter the key code. This can be found in the student's confirmation email, in the invigilation pack, or retrieved from the exam schedule screen. Next, the student confirms their details. They acknowledge the examining agreement, which details their responsibilities for exam integrity and confidentiality. Then the proctor unlocks the exam, either by giving them the pen or unlocking on the back end. Today, I'll give Emily the pen. D J J T. HL. There are a number of features that students have access to that will help them navigate the exam. They can cross out answer options by right clicking them. They can highlight text by selecting it with their mouse and clicking the highlight icon that appears. They can adjust the color contrast using the gear icon in the bottom left, selecting their desired option and clicking apply. And they can flag questions to come back to later. We can assist with other items such as Zoom and screen readers within our accommodations process. We'll prepare a video specifically for students showing them how to use these options and a mock exam so they can get comfortable with the system. They or your IT department will be able to install the Secure Client Lockdown Browser before the system launches 
to ensure everything is set up properly. And as you can see here, there are 10 minute breaks between sections for all exams, which can be skipped. That concludes our demo. Now we'll transition to Q&A. We will compile your questions to inform future educational materials for the transition. Denise, 